on the phone. It's Mosquito Steve, the expert in those matters, returning to the show. Hey, Mosquito Steve. Good morning, guys. You know, I'm the Chris Christie of Dallas, Texas. <laughs> You're also definitely not going to be vice president? I'm not going to be vice president, and I love Butterfingers. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, what you eat uh, affects whether or not mosquitoes are hanging around you, by the way. I hear that. A myth? Is that a myth? When What you eat could attract mosquitoes? That That is a myth. Uh, you know, what you'll do, if you eat enough garlic, you might send some mosquitoes away, but you're not going to have very many good friends either, <laughs> I don't think. <laughs> so it's a win-win. There you go. It is a win-win, actually. Yeah, yeah. That's great. <laughs> Aren't some of your best friends mosquitoes, Steve? Pretty much, really, right now. <laughs> Unfortunately, it is. I, I've spent so much time with them. Here's the thing about mosquitoes. You know what they're going to do. I know what they're going to do when I go out there. They're not going to be nice. They're going to, you know, feed on me, and it's going to be painful. But at least I know what they're going to do. You never know with people. They'll stab you in the back without <laughs> you knowing it. Well, this Zika virus they're talking about, obviously it's going to affect the Olympics coming up in a couple of months. Well, geez, I guess it would be about two months away yeah, very close in uh, Rio de Janeiro. But now they're talking about it's continuing to creep upward through the central United States toward us here in the Mohawk Valley and New York State. And today and for the rest of the week, we're approaching 90 degrees here so if it continues to warm up does that mean the chances of us being affected by this increase well a lot of it has to do with how much water you have had you know the more rain you've had then the more breeding areas there are and so if you've had a lot of rain then yeah the the mosquito populations could increase and that will obviously increase the uh, likelihood of zika up there and we haven't had a lot of rain it's one of the problems that we're yeah. facing here in this area we didn't get a lot of snowfall this winter either and some of the lakes and reservoirs are suffering because of it yeah and well y'all may actually you might avoid some of the the worst uh, possibilities then because i know down here when i'm wanting to test and we've had a drought I can't find enough mosquitoes to count and do testing. Hmm. Hmm. Well, that, that's a good thing then. And uh, It is a good thing. <laughs> so I had a question. Someone, We had someone on the air, I believe it was last week or the week before, <laughs> and they suggested that you had said specifically one mosquito carries the Zika virus. They had suggested that that one mosquito could then pass it on to other species of mosquitoes. Is that true, or is there just this one mosquito that's capable of carrying the Zika virus and that's it? No, they actually have, so there's there's two different, there's the Aedes uh, aegypti and the Aedes albopictus. Those are two different, uh, they're, they're both the Aedes genetic species, but there are two different versions of it. They have also found Culex mosquitoes um, that have it. Now, Culex mosquito is the one that's famous for carrying West Nile virus. In fact, you guys, I think the first case of West Nile virus was from New York. Yeah. And, that, and so back in 1999, so if the QX gets it, then, you know, it will affect, it'll go all the way up to Canada. And that's interesting because uh, I know our local health department here has been focusing on that, that we're more likely to see the West Nile virus and the triple E virus more prevalent in our area. Absolutely. And West Nile virus and triple E are not fun. West Nile virus, will, you, you can be sick for months with that and, and even longer if you're susceptible to it. And so Zika, in most people, they, they won't show symptoms of Zika, and it'll pass in a few days even if they do. Uh, talking to Mosquito Once Steve. Uh, Mosquito Steve on the Talk of the Town at 100.7 FM WUTQ. Another one of the other uh, another one of the topics that was brought up was the fact that uh, a mosquito can transmit Zika to a male, and then that male partner can transmit that to a fe female in sexual conduct uh, contact. Yes. Is that is that true? Yeah, so the first case actually was from Dallas, and that's how, but it was not, it was from a male to a male, not a male to a female. Um, so that's, so, uh, you can do that too, yeah. huh, Steve? I'm going to stay away from that. I'm going to stay away from that one altogether. <laughs> okay. But, uh, but yeah, so the, this guy went traveling overseas. He came back. He brought the disease and had sex with another man, and that man got the uh, Zika virus. That was our first case. So, Steve, so. what about, and then someone else has suggested, and I'm just trying to kind of get to all the different possible things that people have heard and see what's correct and what's not. Someone else suggested, let's say, um, I get bitten by, I'm not pregnant, but I get bitten by a Zika-carrying mosquito. Then another mosquito bites me. Does that mosquito get the Zika virus and then pass it on to somebody else? Absolutely. Yeah, that's the thing. That's the difference. So the QX, 
with West Nile virus, it only passes through uh, through birds or horses. But um, with the Zika, yeah, it can be passed from person to person. If a mosquito bites mm -hmm. somebody with Zika, it'll spread. That's why they're saying if you get pregnant and you have um, Zika, you know, you have to stay indoors. Wow. And so, yeah. yeah. Wow. So it's not – so, the, you know, it's interesting you say that. So, I mean, Steve, let's be honest. You're an expert in mosquitoes. A, do we know everything there is to know about this virus? And B, is you just said that it can go to this other type of mosquito, the mosquito that carries the West Nile virus. Do you think in the next couple of years that it's going to eventually spread across the United States? I think it will, and I think even worse than that. So chikungunya, which uh, kind of stepped its toe into the, the United States um, for a little while, that's an even more dangerous one, only in that, uh, you know, with, the, like I said, Zika, not many of the people actually show the symptoms. With chikungunya, like 90% of the people get it show symptoms. And so it's not just what I'm trying to tell people is, look, this is just the tip of the iceberg on pathogens that mosquitoes carry. So we need to be proactive about this. We don't know very much about Zika or about mosquitoes. It's it's baffling to us. Um, so we, we need to just be careful and be protective. And so what are steps that people can be, take to avoid growing mosquitoes and getting <laughs> bitten by mosquitoes? <laughs> Well, uh, don't do what I do. That's for darn sure. So <laughs> no uh, problem there, are, Steve. No problem there. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, uh, so you you obviously the the you want to watch for standing water in your property and things like that. And um, uh, but besides that, you need to wear a repellent. You need to wear a mosquito repellent on you. They're finally the CDC is finally saying there are other things that work besides DEET. Thank God because. DEET actually breaks down in about 45 minutes. So if you want something that lasts longer, if you want the longest and best protection, I would say use my products. But if you, let's forget all that, there are still other products you can use. Picardin is a very good product to use. Um, don't use lotions and creams. Once you rub it into your body, it's half as effective as a spray-on repellent. And then uh, someone just was quickly texting in, said, if you get bitten by a Zika mosquito today and you get pregnant, say, five years from now, will the baby be affected? Like, what's the time period if, if a woman who's not pregnant today gets bitten, what's the, how long will she be affected with the Zika where it's enough to impact uh, a future pregnancy? Usually just a few days to a week. And once you've got it, you can't ever get it again. You're immune from the disease from here on. So... Um, so that's probably what they're trying to do with vaccines. They're probably figuring out how can we give everybody Zika, and that way they can get over it real quick and never get it again. Mm. That's how our government works, right? That's, you know, <laughs> let's give it to everybody. All right. <laughs> Favorite bug guy Steve. in the world. Thanks. Right What's your website again? MosquitoSteve.com.